Hey everyone, it's Flutter time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the search autocomplete with the Foxy search in the TomTom Maps APIs to enhance the results with categories and brand and looking around an area in the map. Aside from the TomTom search API, we're going to use also the Map Display APIs with Map Libre plugin for Flutter. Map Libre is a collection of open source mapping libraries that provides GPU accelerated vector tile rendering. And we're going to need that in order to display our map. This is the completed app. Its default route shows a full screen map and an overlaid search bar. Let's take a look at the code. In the build method of main.dart, we begin with a material app with a stack layout. The stack contains a map widget, which displays the selected search results, a positioned search bar widget, which the user can tap to enter a search, and a drawer big widget that will display the list of the selected search results. Flutter provides a function, show search, that shows a full screen search page and returns the result reselected by the user when the page is closed. The appearance of the page is determined by the provided delegate. It provides template functions that can be overridden to customize the display of these search results. We are going to use this to save implementing our own search interface and handling page navigation manually. Looking at the on-tap handler for the search bar, I have defined a async function that calls show search. Show search actually takes two arguments, the build context and an instance of the search delegate that will implement the domain specific search. The delegate is initialized with the TomTom API key. Remember the one that you can get for free in a developer TomTom.com platform. The current map center and callbacks for when the user selects a search result and when the search is clear, for example. Now let's take a look at the location search delegate file. In this implementation, the location search delegate extends the base search delegate class. I am importing some libraries used by the delegate and classes that I have written, including this search service, which is a Dart API for interacting with the TomTom fuzzy search and the autocomplete APIs. We are going to be looking at the implementation of the search service a little later on. Because uh, case keystrokes can occur in quick succession, I am debouncing the calls to the TomTom APIs because these APIs are rate limited. To do that, I am using a completer and a debouncer from the debounce underscore throttle package. In short, what's happening here is that the search services will not be called until a delay of at least uh, 300 milliseconds and after 300 milliseconds have elapsed since the last key press. Now let's look at the delegate template method that I am overriding. The first one is the app bar theme, which returns the theme that is used to configure the search page. In the theme, I'm styling the search text input to be consistent with the appearance of the search bar on the map page. Build actions returns a list of widgets to display after the search query in the app bar. I'm creating an icon button to clear the search. When pressed it, it will call the onClear callback that is passed to the delegate. Build leading returns a widget to display before the search query. Once again, I am creating an icon button, this time with a back arrow. When I press it, it will close the search page and show the map page. And finally, build results, it's called when the delegate's query value changes. In build results, the response data from the TomTom Fuzzy Search and Autocomplete APIs is translated into a list view, displaying the search results. The first things I do in the function body is to update the debouncer's property to the new value in on the query. A future builder is used to build the list of search results when the result data is available. Initially, the query will be an empty string and the snapshot will have no data. In this case, an empty container is returned. When the request to the TomTom APIs are in flight, but not completed, the snapshots will still have no data, but the query will be non-empty and a progress indicator is returned. And finally, when the snapshot data is available, then the list is built by the widget. 
For each list item, I'm creating a list tile. The list can have two types of items. The first is a suggestion for a brand or category, and the second is an address or point of interest matched by the user query. Now we have the built suggestions, which is called whenever the content of the query changes. I'm just calling build results here as I want the same behavior, which is to query again the TomTom search API, both as the user types, if they submit like a type query. And the show results, which is called when the user submits a search by tapping the search button on the device keyboard. Here I'm searching for the current query, building a result model and passing it to the on search results callback. Now let's look at the do query method, which is where the calls to the search service are made. I'm calling both the autocomplete API and Fossy search API asynchronously and combining their results. Aside from the API key and the user provided query, I am using the API's limit parameter to specify how many results I want back and the lat and long parameters to bias the search around the current map center which we saw earlier is passed as a property by the delegate's parent. Once both async calls have been completed and combined the results are used to build a list of items that are going to be rendered by the build results method. I won't go into the list item implementation here other than to say that each list item knows how to build a title and a subtitle for each data type. This is how the combined search results look when rendered on the search page. The category and brand suggestion returned by the autocomplete API are shown first, followed by the result from the Fossy Search API. Now, we've seen how calls to the TomTom Search APIs are triggered in the custom search delegate and the response data displayed in the delegate's result list. Let's take a look at the implementation of the search service. The search service class provides a Dart interface onto the TomTom REST APIs. It has public methods for calling both the Fuzzy Search and the Autocomplete APIs, each of which returns a list of location and suggestions models respectively. Let's look at the Fuzzy Search method. Fuzzy Search accepts three arguments, the TomTom API key, the user provided query, and a map of optional parameters that will be sent into the API endpoint. I have written a little helper function which merged and passed parameters with the API key and language parameters and providing like defaults to the endpoint. The full URL is built using Dart's URI class, which takes the hostname, path, and query parameters as constructor arguments. Note that I'm building the URL with a .json extension, indicating that I want the results back from the TomTom API in JSON format. The get function from the HTTP package is used to make the request. And if the request is successful, the response is passed into a JSON object and location model created for each result. The location class has a factory method that knows how to construct a model instance from the TomTom API JSON structure. We will take a look at that now. The location model class has fields for the location ID type which indicates what type of location it is, such a, as an address or a point of interest, etc. And a list of address lines and the position of the location represented as a lat long object. In addition to the instance fields that I have defined, we have getter methods for returning the primary and secondary text. These are to show for this location when it's displayed in a list. The Fuzzy Search API searches across a number of location types and provides address information for each, including a single line address field named freeform address. I have created a static method called getAddressLines that creates a list of address components based on the location type. And these are used by the primary and secondary text getters. For each of the results returned from the autocomplete API, a suggestion model object is created. The suggestion model class is structured similarly to the location model, but simpler, because there is fewer properties related for autocomplete result. So, in summary, we have looked on how we can use the Flutter's inbuilt show search function to create a search page. 
and we have integrated the Fuzzy Search and Autocomplete APIs through implementing a service API and created model objects representing the suggestions and location data in the search page. If we do that in a list view. If you are interested in displaying the search results on a map, take a look at the full source code for the tutorial, which is down here in the description below. And so one of the possible approach on how to do that. If you want more information about the search API and the autocomplete functionality that can be provided in the TomTom Maps APIs, take a look at our developer portal in developer.tomtom.com. Leave a comment down below and we will try to answer your questions as fast as I can. Again, thank you for watching and happy mapping.